As you can see here from Matthew 8 and Luke 4, Simon Peter had a mother-in-law, which means, of course, that he would have to have a wife. And uh, Carl Keating in his article, Did Peter Have a Wife?, he wrote, quote, apparently so, since he had a mother-in-law, customarily the two go together, unquote. So even Roman Catholic apologists recognize that their first pope had a wife. But Carl Keating goes on to say that perhaps Peter had a mother-in-law because he's actually a widower. Because, of course, it would be pretty awkward if the Pope, the so-called Bishop of Rome, and the, uh, the one who has replaced Christ on earth, is actually uh, married while in his office as Pope. But notice what 1 Corinthians 9.5 says. The Apostle Paul says, do, you, do we not have a right to take along a believing wife, even as the rest of the apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Cephas, Simon Peter, and the... Uh, the Revised Standard Version Catholic Edition says, Do we not have the right to be accompanied by a wife as other apostles and the brethren of the Lord and Cephas? Now, I think this verse totally contradicts Roman Catholic tradition on a wide variety of ways and dimensions. Even if we assume that Simon Peter was a widow and was no longer married at the time that Paul wrote this, even though he was the Pope, he has the right to take along with him a believing wife. Paul and the rest of the apostles, even the brothers of the Lord, the brothers through Mary and Joseph who were born after Jesus was born, including James and Judas and uh, John, they have every right to take someone who is a Christian believer as a wife if they choose to, but Paul chooses not to. He chooses to remain celibate. Now, this idea, to me, contradicts the Roman Catholic sacrament of the holy order or the holy rites. The priests are supposed to remain unmarried. They don't have any right to take with them a believing wife. Now, the Greek word for take along or accompanied is a verb, and it is infinitive present active. So it has present reality or relevance to Paul's situation as he wrote that. To Paul's and Peter's situation with the other apostles, they have every right to take along with them a, a believing wife as, uh, as, a, as a companion in the ministry. And uh, take along, lead about, or accompanied does imply a conjugal relationship, something that is very close. So therefore, uh, an apologist like Keating would try to argue that believing wife is not the right meaning of the terms in the Greek, but it simply means sister woman. To take along a woman with you on your uh, ministry kind of journeys as a, as a help in the ministry, someone who is not your wife or someone that you're married to, but someone uh, helping you in the ministry who's a sister in Christ, and this is the right. And of course, this kind of uh, interpretation is pretty meaningless. Uh, if it's really about a wife, then it's, it's a very meaningful point. But watering it down to that level is obviously reading the verse through the lens of your Roman Catholic tradition. The fact that Paul specifically mentions Cephas by name, knowing that Cephas was at least married at some point, proves that he's talking about a wife and not just a sister woman. Therefore, since accompanied is in the present active tense in the Greek, it implies that Peter was married at that time. Even if he wasn't, he had the right to get married along with all the other apostles, which contradicts Roman Catholic tradition. I would be interested in hearing their explanation on that. I'm sure they would find some kind of way, as they often do, to get around simple Bible facts. And if the brothers of the Lord, referring to Jesus, including uh, John and Jude and James, Jude or Judas, um, if they were through Mary and Joseph, his younger half-brothers, then of course that would contradict essential official Roman Catholic teaching on the perpetual virginity of Mary. So this verse and many others uh, present serious problems to Roman Catholic tradition. I'll close with this passage from 1 Timothy chapter 4. It says, 
But the Spirit explicitly says that in later times some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons, by means of the hypocrisy of liars said in their own conscience as with a branding iron, men who forbid marriage and advocate abstaining from foods which God has created to be gratefully shared in by those who believe and know the truth. The Roman Catholic Church has departed from the faith on numerous levels.